Okay, I'm going to do something which I've been meaning to film for quite a while and this is in relation to my uh, day job as an art and design technician. I get an abundance of questions about making plinths, pedestals, podiums and boxes and this video is going to try and address some of those uh, questions and illustrate the process you might uh, follow to build a simple plinth, pedestal, podium or box. Um, for this I have already cut my pieces out. Um, I'll explain the measurements in a second. And in terms of uh, tools and material, these are MDF. I'm using MDF because that takes paint really well. I've got myself a metal claw hammer, so don't use a wooden mallet or a rubber mallet. Um, I've got a couple clamps. Um, this is not for clamping pieces together. This is for supporting the panels so they stay upright. I have some nails. These ones are a little bit shorter than what I would normally use. Um, I would probably go for 30 or 40 mil. These look like 20 or 25. I've got a marking gauge and I've got some glue. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick drawing of the uh, plinth, pedestal, podium or box and explain some of the variations. Um, if you're making a plinth uh, to put a piece of sculpture on top, um, you don't want to use mitres, you want to do straight cuts um, and use a butt joint to join everything together. Uh, mitres are just too fiddly uh, and if you're going to paint it you're not going to see that anyway. Um, I mean the problem with mitres is it's very difficult to get a machine set up to do uh, mitres accurately. For example, um, some panel saws, if I draw the saw, that's the blade, the track or the guide fence may only be positioned on one side of the blade. Now if the blade can only move in that direction for example, the problem you have, you see this drawing here, this is your blade, that's your fence, is when you start to cut your pieces, um, the corner of the mitre can actually feed underneath the fence and that can skew the angle of your panel. Um, obviously the on a saw like this, I know a lot of felder saws are like this, um, you do your rip cuts on this side, you'd have a table, a mitre table on the left hand side that you would use to do your panel cuts. So rips on the right, panel cuts on the left. Anyway, to make my life easier and anyone who plans to do something similar, don't do mitres, avoid the mitres, the folly of mitres. Uh, you'll be wasting your time. The other problem with mitres is if you make a little bit of a mistake and you start sanding, you make the problem more obvious. So each time you sand a little bit on one corner and the other corner, you start to expose more of the end that you made a mistake. You know, to get it right, you need to make sure that the machine is set up correctly and you're working like to a high tolerance and most people can't work to a high tolerance. So again, don't even ask about getting a mitre um, cut done for a plinth, pedestal or box. Screw that, okay? There is a method to putting together a plinth. Um, if I draw from the top, you'll get a better impression. So these two sides are the same and those two sides are the same. When you're doing your cuts, whether it's on a large band saw or I'm doing it on the table saw or panel saw, you want to make sure that you batch your cuts so you don't move the uh, fence uh, between cuts so that you minimize the chance of getting an error. The reason you do this is to basically reduce errors and to get a square plinth or box. Um, the thing that students often forget is to subtract the thickness of the material uh, from the overall size that they want. So if this 
length is meant to be 220 mil and that's 12 and that's 12 you're gonna get 196 so it doesn't matter if you're using 18 mil 12 9 or 6 obviously if you're making a pedestal to put something like a piece of sculpture on top you probably don't want to use 6 or 9 you want to use a minimum of 12 or 18 uh, 12 is fine though for most things uh, you could take quite a lot of weight um, and then you got your top piece as well that fits on there when you're assembling your plinth you normally do three sections first then the lid and then the final panel uh, the first assembly is with the two shorter pieces and the longer one anyway that's the theory you see you can tell I miss my perspective class so you get that here. these two pieces here are the wider panels and then the short ones go in there and then your lid and if you were planning to put a projector in this or a DVD player or something like that you wanted to turn this one panel into a door what you would do is or you wanted a shelf for example because you're going to have flies or something you would follow the same procedure and make one two of the shorter pieces and the longer piece or the wider piece then your top then you would add your bit of timber in there making sure that's nice and square then you can put a shelf in there and then you'll instead of having a full panel on the end you would cap that off with whatever height that matches up with that shelf if you're putting a panel on that you want to hide something on the inside um, you could use uh, magnetic latches or you could screw a bit of timber in and then screw the panel in and the rule generally with uh, fixings is if you do them evenly they become invisible if you do them haphazardly they will look obvious so I'm using the clamps to hold the two side panels up what you can do with your marking gauge is mark six mil on that and scribe a line which is where your nails will follow. Okay. I like to use nails because it reduces the uh, sanding involved in finishing up the plinth. Uh, the other thing you should do when you're putting uh, nails in is not to start right on the edge otherwise the MDF will split so start maybe three fingers in keep checking with your thumb and finger to make sure that you are level between the two pieces and you can follow your line probably going to put four in here uh, when you use nails to add a bit more um, strength to the join you can pivot the nails into angles like this and it will make it harder to pull them out or the panel to come out um, the other thing you do is you work from one side to the opposite and the reason you do this obviously this is a larger scale uh, there may be a little bit of flex in the material and you can compensate for that by pushing and pivoting the uh, panels so this feels like the bottom is a little bit further out so I'm going to pull the top across that's really flush there now but I've got a lip there that doesn't matter because I'm only fixing this section here and as you go along stop every so often when you hammer the nail and just check that your your line is nice and flush and your nail isn't coming out through the MDF. So I'm resting the top panel on the edge of this side panel and I'm giving myself enough room just to put another bead of glue down. This can Like that. 
not too worried about the glue splurges. I can now take the clamps off and lift this up. Take my top panel, drive a line and then put a bead down. If you find it difficult to squeeze the glue out of the tub, it might be because the nib is stuck. So don't squeeze it until it explodes. Number one rule, don't use excessive force when you're doing anything. Stop, have a think, you probably realise you're doing something stupid before you do something really stupid. And the top goes on. So I do the uh, the face with the widest panel and I turn it around and square the base against the top. This only works if you've cut everything square. Obviously if you cut everything on the pierce it's basically gonna you're gonna follow your error. Okay. Bring that around. So I'm using my thumb and finger on this side to pivot the board until it's nice and flat over here. Now I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to put a shelf in, this is when you would do it. You would take some strips of MDF, you take a, a square, draw your lines all the way around, follow it over, you would glue and nail those in on the inside, place your shelf in and then potentially add a shorter um, panel on the side where you could still see into your shelf and then you can have your paperwork in there or a projector or something like that. Uh, for this one we're going to literally put this panel right to the end and enclose the entire plinth. So, take the marking gauge again, grab a line there, grab a line there, going to put a bead up there, The bead there and close the box off now. So when I'm doing the final panel I'm actually pulling it this way with my fingers to make sure I don't get a gap along the top. Alright, I'm going to make a mistake now. I'm going to hammer this nail through so it comes out the end here. Oh no! The nail has come out. What shall I do? What you don't do is try and sand that flat. Alright? Because you'll bugger up the sanding pads and that will really annoy me. What you do do is get a punch. So place the flat of the punch on the point of the nail and just whack it a few times so the head of the nail pokes out. You can then take the, where are you, follow me, find me, there you go. 
the claw of the hammer and lever that nail out. Don't reuse the nail and don't reuse the hole. Make a new hole right next to the old one. And the final side, everyone who does this for the first time always forgets to put the nails on this last section here. It doesn't matter as long as you've got glue there, but I will judge you. Mm -hmm. Now you take your punch and you hammer the nails in about half a mil or a mil down and the reason you do that is so that the head of the nails does not rip the sandpaper on the pad and also when you go to paint it you have a bit of space to fill the heads and prevent the metal potentially rusting and coming through the paintwork over time. Now put your tools away. I'm going to sand the box now, it's not going to take very long. I'm going to make sure I'm wearing goggles and my coconut ear defenders. I don't expect to see anyone not wearing goggles or coconut ear defenders when doing this. I've also got the sander on an extractor. I've got 80 grit paper. You can and what I would prefer to do is actually use a flush trim bit on a router instead of sanding. But if you're careful when assembling, you won't be doing either for long. Anyway, that's how to make a pedestal plinth podium or box. If you were to make a podium, you'd make it in the same way by adding some timber or additional panels inside to help distribute the weight and reinforce the joints. In the next video, I will show you how to paint it. So until then, please sacrifice a thumb to the algorithm gods. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below and you'll catch me in the next one. Thanks again. And that's all the sanding you need to do. No more than that.